It, it was a good time. We hit about three or four other breweries on the way out, too. What's up, Andrew? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? We're good. Good. Are you near Boston? I'm in Boston. So I'm across I'm in Somerville. So I'm across the river from Boston proper, but it's considered okay. Boston. And this hop farm is about an hour 40 west in a small town called Northfield. So not really near anything, but it's it's, it's beautiful out there. It's nice to get out of the city every once in a while. Did you see Treehouse is going to Tewksbury? Yeah, that's, that's about 25-ish minutes from where I am now. So it'll be the nice. closest location. I've actually never been to a treehouse yet. So. Neither have I. What so is that, a treehouse? A, looks like it's going to be a nice place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they take care of the properties that they inherit. So yeah, but people, you know, people are already complaining about the traffic that's going to happen. Oh, of course, because people in Massachusetts love to complain. That's one thing that they like to do out here. Is there was a treehouse that was going to go somewhere else, and all the neighbors complained about the traffic, and it seemed like I think it was treehouse. They wanted to go to some small town, and everybody complained. Wouldn't surprise me. I don't remember that exact instance, but that doesn't surprise me somehow. Maybe either the treehouse or the Yeah. What is a treehouse? What is a treehouse? Yeah. What are you? Is this a business or something you guys are talking it's, about? It's, 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 it's the Hayes. It's Trillium's main competition for hazy IPAs. They don't distribute. I mean, they don't just make hazies. They make some fantastic barrel aged beers. Everything they make is great. They don't distribute it all anywhere. So you have to go to the source to get them. That's probably. Uh, their main locations in Charlton, Mass, which is about 70 ish minutes from where I am. And they're just, they, they become a destination. I mean, their original model was you drive up, get cans, can't have anything on premise. So people would like go over to this like really awesome barbecue spot and just crack open the cans fresh out of it. But yeah, it's a, it's a highly sought after, very much like Trillium or Monkish okay. type of brewery. I'm surprised and I haven't heard of them. Themselves. They they make a lot of good products, and it's still hyped up. People mule out there and mule back out, and nice. they sell by the case, and they sell mixed cases, and the the beer's good. Yeah. But I think there's also a lot of other great producers out here that don't have quite the hype. They made you know Julius would say you know modeled after an orange Julius <laughs> is their flagship hazy IPA, and it's just it's thick orange, pulpy you know New England IPA. And they captured the craze by not distributing anywhere. So you had to go get it from them. Yep. Yeah, I know a couple of places that do something like that, so. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Has everybody's weekend been? Not long enough. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Never like a sunny one. By the way, t this week's beer choice is a really expensive one. <laughs> Yeah, the Belgians, those Belgians get up there. Yeah. <clears throat> Luckily, I went with the cheaper 750 milliliter $18 bottle instead of nice. the $34 four pack of 12 ounce bottles. Yeah. Well, I always have to make a commitment tonight. I went with less small, uh, uh, Trapel and then a Duval, and I think they were probably each bottle was about five fifty a bottle, I think, yep. give or take. Yeah, mine were about six six fifty. So, I have West Mall as well, and I, then Duval. I could only get a four pack. I couldn't get anything but a four pack in the Duval, and uh, the bottle was the seven fifty was like eighteen bucks. Yeah, that's about right. And I, I ended up spending like 34, 35 bucks on, <laughs> on this week's beer. So Yeah, I got a four pack of new bell as well. I couldn't mm -hmm. find it in just a single bottle. Yeah. So I couldn't find Chimay, so I got an Allagash triple. So nice. we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Allagash triple's fucking delicious. This was Award the, winner. This was the only one that they had. So so I'm going to ask that next week's beers be a, l a little cheaper. <laughs> That's fair. That's <laughs> the domestic light bloggers. Yeah, Miller Light and Bud Light. Yeah, let's go for it. Keep I don't still. know about that, but... <laughs> what are the off flavors in a Keystone? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Look at that. <laughs> that came out real well. Damn, these beers are carbonated too. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. Oh, yeah. We kicked up. Yeah, with that Duval, I'd recommend pouring halfway in and then letting it sit. Yeah. That head'll get you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got four solid fingers. This got to be bottle conditioned. Yeah. Sure it is. <clears throat> But that's why I brought two glasses, so I could open both. I hate pouring out of cans. Yeah. To be honest, I'm just not a big fan of cans in general. Funny thing is, this one is not giving me much head at all. Uh. Maybe the, I've, I've never had the can of Duval, so maybe they've conditioned it differently. I don't think you can, but uh, like bottle condition or or I don't think you can in a can. I think uh, I think it has to be force carbonated. Yeah, yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense because the bottom layers of cans, when you stack them, you know, seven eight cases high. If it, it relies on the carbonation to maintain structural integrity of the can itself, so yeah, I think I think these just have to be be force carbonated. Huh. You feeling better? Mostly, I still have this lingering cough, and I'm wondering if I still am sick or something, but. It's just been two weeks and it hasn't gone away and it's like causing me to dry heave and like cough stuff up. So it's not pleasant. That's a, that's a Cliff Notes version I'll, <laughs> I'll put out there into the world. But yeah, otherwise I feel fine. I'm just annoyed. It's like lingered for way too long. I'm like, do I have bronchitis? Do I have something else? Like something else creeping into my chest? So, but nothing's affecting my taste or smell. So I'll take that. It's also just allergy season. So it could be, you know, that time of year i freaking allergies are every year worse I, yeah so what are we all drinking now we don't we're, we're, we have both next to each other or the triple or yeah i'm still waiting on the duval to, to, <laughs> to calm down <laughs> you, yeah. might, you might need to take an ice cream scoop and get some of that yeah. stuff out of there and then uh got the tripel ready to go i just nice. uh topped off the shimmy so I mean, that's got a nice little biscuit on top, to be honest with you. Yeah. Ooh, smells heavenly. I love these beers. These are, you know, if I could drink them all day, I would without putting myself in a bad shape by 3 p.m. It's like 10% or something like that. Yeah, 9, 10. Oh, this is 8. And the Duval is 8.5%, at least on yeah. the bottle. And the Trapel, uh, nine and a half. Yeah. Our discussion about fermentation is going to be a little wild then. <laughs> well, there's drinking. wild fermentation out there, Diane. Keep drinking. Are we discussing wild fermentation? Because we can do that. <laughs> I thought we were just discussing all fermentation. You know, it's the yeast we could do, right? Mm -hmm. I also got this bag of hops yesterday when I was out of the hop farm. And I just really want to, like, live in it. <laughs> it left me with a bag of Cascade hops that I could take home with me. And it's just, it's so fucking delicious to smell. You know, we have, the, we have a cooler at work that is only for hops. And the only thing that lives in that cooler is hops. People walk in there and tell me about the smell and how it is, and I'm like, I, I don't smell it anymore. It's sad. Yeah. You've got nose deaf or nose blind.
So in terms of these two beers, they're pretty goddamn similar, except for the carbonation, I think, and the Belgian Golden Strong is a little higher. And what they do in the triple is they add like candy sugar and other things to up the to up the fermentate to up the fermentables and give it that darker color. Generally, when you're adding candy sugar or any kind of anything like that, it's to uh, lessen the body. Yeah, lighten the body and increase the alcohol content. Yeah. Especially like if you're doing a in a brew house, if you're doing that uh, high of an alcohol gravity, it would re require a lot of grains, which would suck in the mash tun. So adding that candy sugar, you could have a normal mash tun height of grain and be able to get your alcohol without overfilling your mash tun. This is boozy. Like, it's got the it's got warmth, it's and I mean boozy boozy. The triple. Yeah. Yeah, I'm reading in the road to just around the triple recipes often contain 20 to 25 percent candy sugar. Mm -hmm. And the fermentation temperature is really is pretty high. Yes. Which really pronounces, you know, the esters of the peach, pear, banana, clove, all those high fruity esters. Juicy fruit gum. That's what I smell. I don't yeah. get that at all. All I'm getting off of this is like booze. Like seriously. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, West Malt Triple, I get it's a little bit of sweet, some citrusy, but I don't really, it doesn't come off like with any kind of farmhouse or anything like that. A little bit sweet and citrusy. So the Belgian Golden Strong is actually could be higher in alcohol than the triple based on his BJCP guidelines. Could be. I appreciate that they did him. Yeah. Oh, uh, this bottle, I think this bottle's old. And I think the Duval's a bit big, bitter, more bitter than the triple I have. Yeah, there's a little bit more of a pronounced hot bitterness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alright, I can't find a date on this, but I've got some white flakes, which may just be the, uh, yeah. might just be the, the yeast in the bottom. And honestly, like, very little of the like I'm getting a little, like a little bit of like, um, it's very boozy and kind of darky, more um, kind of raisiny a little. Yeah. There's just a little bit more of a coin sweetness. Yeah. It's not bad, but I'm, I'm guessing I got, I'm guessing my bottle's pretty old. And the Duval here doesn't give a born on date. It has an expiration date of next year. And then the Trapel was brewed a year ago, a little, mm -hmm. about 14 months ago. Uh, mine's May 8th, 2022. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. I but wait, that's today. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's, that's today. That's when it's going to expire. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, it ex it expired today. <clears throat> Just in time. Yeah. Happy you gotta drink day, all you know. four cans today. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it's be a long day. Happy Monday. Honestly, this this one tastes way better. The Duval. Yeah. 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 Should make it have also not been stored properly. Yeah, they weren't. Yeah, they were on a uh, warm shelf in the uh, in the store. I mean, they don't have to be refrigerated, but no. uh, yeah, warm shelf on the on the uh, the floor. I mean, it, it is a cork and cage, so there's that. Um, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing it's old. Personally, I don't think... I, I would drink this ish with people but I don't think I would give it to a customer Yeah, to be honest with you mm. alright Alan what are we pairing it with the, the, which one are you just drinking the Duval or the, I'm drinking the Duval um, mm -hmm. I Duval. hear that I mean this stands up to a lot Belgian beers go with a lot of different things mm -hmm. I think this would stand up to chicken roasted you know roasted turkey chicken fowl basically nothing as no, no, I mean, I wouldn't go towards dark meat with it, but maybe like a, a light pork, like a breaded pork or fried pork, like a schnitzel. You could you could pair that with this, uh, but I would go more towards chicken and turkey, and then apple pie. You know, some sort of fruit pie and with a little bit of spice to it, like a cinnamon apple mm -hmm. strudel mm -hmm. pie, anything like that. And then I mean, this could go with a hearty salad. This could go with like. A bitter like endive radicchio, some sort of bitter salad because of the bitter and spicy notes in the beer, but also that yeast profile will wash over it as well. Dude, with awesome. some meat, on, with some meat on that salad, maybe. Yeah, ham, ham, maybe ham. And yeah, maybe like some, a maybe salad, salt, yeah. some salt, some salt or bacon. Yeah. Pasta is really notoriously tricky that I, to pair with. Beer. I mean, people say like the brown ales and tomato sauce are about the best pairing you can get, but I've never successfully enjoyed like a tomato sauce base anything with the beer. I mean, pizza and beer is kind of synonymous. Like, I don't pay that much attention to it, but like in terms of a pasta, like maybe a brown butter sagey type, like butternut squashy type of thing. Something. I, I just think fall flavors and Belgian beers go together because. You're getting the hearty, but not too rich in like January, February, like stews. Like this could cut through a mac and cheese nicely, or like a spetzel. Or I think cream based rather than tomato based, just anything with this. I think the Belgian triple will be too heavy for a cream. I think that'll just, you know, overpower or just be too much for, but the cup of high carbonation and a little bit of lighter flavor. From this, I mean, the thing about the Belgian beers with the alcohol difference is it could depend. An 8.5 Duval might pair better with something or worse than something than a 10.5% Belgian Golden Strong. So I think it depends which one you're drinking. But you can get away with a little bit more light flavors with the uh, Belgian Golden Strong than the triple because the triple's just rich. What do you think of the spices that you're detecting in the Duval? I mean, it's Anise? almost like it for, for very similar to Hefeweizen spices. You're yeah. getting clove, you're yeah. getting a little bit of nutmeg, and then pepper, white pepper and black pepper both. Like, it's just, it's very lively is what I, it's a very alive beer. Yeah, I feel like the carbonation is like maybe somewhere like maybe around 3.2 mm -hmm. to like 3.5 volumes yeah. and it just, yeah. it explodes. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely, like I did not get that on the first. Can. No, you didn't. I, I'd be curious yeah. if you got a Duval that wasn't quite at its expiration date, even in a can, and just to you know, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you go out and buy another four pack, but you know, down the road, if you go buy another Duval or find one in a bottle or a can that's not quite at its date, what it looks like and tastes like out of that. I mean, I'm totally, I'm totally going to probably try that. Um, no, that's not going to affect the uh, carbonation level in the can. No, that's true. So that would... No, and I, yeah, they shouldn't. Yeah. But I don't know that I would want to... Uh, like, this uh, was bottle conditioned, I'm sure. Um, I don't know that you can do a can at that high of a volume of CO2. You can. Without possibly exploding. No, you can, because, uh, like... Coca-Cola is like three, three, three and a half volumes, something like that. Coke, Coke's high, so like all all soft drink sodas are high carb. So, <clears throat> all right, what were we doing the triple with? <laughs> there, I get a lot of fruit. Like maybe something, uh, some something like Thai or something that's. Got some spices, got some fruit. 
Yeah. Flavors in it, maybe? Yeah, he could go nicely with Thai, Thai noodles or something <clears> like that. <throat> I, again, I say roast chicken, roast turkey. I mean, it, I think all Belgian beers go really nicely with fowl, or just with, but the, the uh, Belgian triple might stand a higher roast, a higher preparation of meat. Randy Mosier says, "When in doubt, go Belgium. When you're taking yeah. when you're taking <laughs> yeah. something to to dinner with you." <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah, so like, I think you, I think it'd actually be really interesting to get a saison, a golden strong, and a triple. Mm-hmm. Compare them all with the same exact thing, and see if you notice any interplay because mm-hmm. they're almost just like big cousins of each other. Yeah. You're just not amping it up a notch, or a Belgian blonde, a Belgian triple, and a Belgian a golden strong. I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm going to go complain to my bottle shop about this because it, it was a lot of money for that. Yeah, you should. That mm-hmm. was, yeah. That's valid. Yeah. We do the same tasting beer. It's, it's a big beer to choke down if you don't like it. Because uh, at eighteen yeah. bucks, you want to make sure you get your money's worth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Usually, it's not a big deal for me just to like waste half a bottle or whatever. I don't like. The amount of beer that I've I've dumped down the drain in my life is uh, staggering, but yeah. like this is one that was like, eh, damn, that really sucks. Yeah. So in tasting beer for the Belgian triple, they say pair with roast pork, rich seafood like lobster, and creamy dessert such as creme, bru- creme brulee. <clears throat> Belgian golden strong. They say wide range of food: salmon, chicken, spicy cuisine such as Thai. I can see that actually interplaying with Thai better because of the spiciness of yeah. the Belgian Golden Strong compared to the Dog. Belgian Triple, like, it, it's mellower in spice, but the flavor, the yeast flavors are just boosted up. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, I didn't, I didn't feel there was much of the any of the esters in the Duval versus the Triple. It was like, Yeah, it's a good face. Yeah. The Triple, I almost get, like, Jet fuel, gasoline. Yeah, the West Ma. I, I, yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's just like it's potent. Yeah, yeah this is my first real first drink of it. I was like, oh damn. Oh, so yours is real boozy too. <laughs> yeah, because I almost I have a bottle of the new Belgium Chapelle uh-huh. here already, which it, it's a pretty good beer. But I'm like, no, I want to go actual Belgium. And this one is like, it is, it's hot. Okay, so I'm not the only one. Maybe my bottle isn't too far out there. Here's a, here's a good thing. I'm reading the Chris Cohen guide. They say, here's a good kind of thing. Belgian Golden Strongs are similar to triples, but cleaner, simpler, lighter, hoppier, and drier. So lighter, yeah, hoppier, and drier are probably the three takeaways. Because mm-hmm. cleaner and simpler can be more objective opinion words, but... Lighter, hoppier, and drier for a Belgian Golden Strong than a triple. Yeah, I totally get that. Belgian Golden Strong is an attempt to compete with modern Pilsners after World War One. Correct. <laughs> and Westmore is the original triple. It says Westmall was the one that was developed, the triple was originally developed by Westmall in the 1930s. So this is like the OG Belgian triple. Good. It's just, it's warming right in the middle of the chest. And mm-hmm. it's a lot for a Sunday night. Happy <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. You betcha. It'll- I'll be done. It'll still be sunny here in Arizona. And normally, I have a couple beers after. <laughs> I beat my night right here. <laughs> Not tonight. Not tonight. Mm. We need to start talking about fermentation before we go. Probably. Too far. Probably. I'm more. I'm continuously annoyed that the pages in the study guide don't match up with the table of contents. It's pissing me off. On Chris Cohen's. Yeah. It's like you gotta look back a section to really determine where where it is. 
Like it says page one thirty four, I gotta probably look in the one twenties. Oh, that's that sucks. It's like I printed uh, the BJCP, the entire guide, and the way it, it came out with the printer, it was all just out of order. And so trying to, to follow along with the BJCP, it's a it's a pain. Are you going to go to um, work on being a judge? Uh, I've considered it. Um, yeah. Uh, I've done some judging, um, but I haven't taken that step. I kind of feel like I should get this out of the way first and then uh, maybe look at that. Because if you get through this, you should be able to to, to take the online test. It's... Um, I think it's like 80 questions or something and they give you like an hour to do it but it's a lot of comparisons and yeah. contrast in beer so i think maybe a little bit more so with uh bjcp versus cicerone is really knowing your styles flavors um obviously they're not really asking you about food pairings or uh the how to brew and stuff like that is um, compare and contrast say an English brown versus an English mild yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, they, but they will ask some of the questions um, uh, like a four and a half percent beer that brown in color in 27 IBUs something like that uh -huh. so you but it's if you can do do this, it, you should be able to do the BJCP pretty good. Makes sense. If you have your your cicerone, uh, when you go down, when you sit down to do a competition, um, you don't have to be BJCP. You can either be say you got your cicerone or you are a professional brewer, something like that, to do judgings. All right, who's up for a spelling challenge? Oh, God. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to have some more beer. So, lager yeast and ale yeast are, do you, you guys know what the name for each of those scientifically are? Yes. All right, John, with lager yeast? Uh... Saccharomyces, Saccharomyces, uh, Louis Pasteur, uh, Pasteurinus. How do you spell it? All oh, man. Uh, P A S T O R I N U S. You're missing the A. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. P A S T O R I N U S. I A N Anus. There you go. Look at that. I didn't want to go there, but Diane, you can, you the can do some really bad and now see a bitch yeah. in beer. The pastor, the anus, oh, bad yeah. stuff here. You can go bad. Oh, Louis, Louis, Louis is going to be upset. Pastor anus. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John, how do you spell saccharomyces? It's going to be on the exam. It's going to uh, ask you to spell it. S-A-C-C-H. It will not. Period. They yes. will not right. ask you to, they Perfect. will not ask you to spell it. Well, it's on the practice exam, so that's what I'm going by. Yeah, right. that's a. Sorry, I'm just... It's actually discrimination. I'm I'm horribly dyslexic. I couldn't spell that if I tried. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so they won't yeah. ask things like that because it's too much of a risk of a liability of a. You know, Fair enough. All right. Huh? You don't have to spell it then, unless you don't. Unless you want to give it a try. Huh? S a c c h a r o m y c e. Yes, that's what my sees. Oh boy. Yeah. You got it. What's ale yeast, Diane? Uh, C, uh, Saccharomyces, C E R V I E S I A E. Close. Got, close, yeah. They're it's quite close. Sura V C A. Sura V C A. C E R E. V I S I A E. Mm. Yep. I've always I've always remembered that one because cerveza is Spanish right. for beer. 
Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's how I've done that. Hey, when I was reading, uh, I don't know, probably the Beer Bible, the uh, Oxford Companion, there's another name for Pastor Rainius that you begins with U. You're like, wait a minute, Lager yeah. East? What the hell's that? U V U M or something. Alvarium or something? Yeah. yeah. I was like, well, wait a minute. Where that one come from? <laughs> Today, I would one? go with Pastor Anus over Me too. that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It just talks about like like not because they there's certainly I mean they were the same yeast at some point and they diverged. So it, usually they give you like some history of why this name versus that name, but they just drop it in there. And I'm like, where'd that come from? Oh, the brewmaster's table talks about it, but not Pastor Pastor Anus. So it's you like diverging some wood. <laughs> and you hear it for tree falls? Yeah. <laughs> Into the cool So show. I'm I'll stick with Pastor Anus now that we've learned how to spell it. But yeah. um yeah, that kind of is like sometimes they have these one offs and you're like, where the hell that come from? But okay. And I know that there are like two two major yeast strains, lager yeast strains, the Carlsberg and the uh, starts with the T, like True um, True Door or Two Door or something like that. Um, and so I don't know if those are two different. Like one is Pastoranus and one is the other one, but there are two isolated lager yeast um and i think carlsberg figured out theirs in like 1853 um uh but those are the two major lager yeast strains have you guys ever gone through one of the like white labs or anything like that any of their their inventory I've gone through their tour. I haven't. Yeah, I, have, I think I'm going to White Labs in July. There's a, nice. there's in San a Diego. lot. Oh, I mean, in the in the in the industry, like we don't we don't even refer to them as that. We're it's like ale yeast A one five seven three nine. Like yeah, just yeah. Well, and, and lager yeast are pretty boring, comparatively. Yeah, that's true. Well, they don't have a lot. Awesome. Yeah. So it looks like there's four main steps of fermentation that they're outlining in the syllabus. Fermentation, secondary fermentation, and flocculation. I'm... Well, there's there's a lag period when you um, pitch your yeast into the tank, and it usually lasts twelve to maybe thirty six hours, and then that's the, the the cells are starting to divide and take up, and so when you're like home brewing, you pitch your yeast. A lot of people like they freak out if they don't see like instantaneous activity in the first 24 hours um so you have your your lag um your exponential yeast. your stationary and then there's mm -hmm. final basically the, stage. the yeast is swimming around eating all of the alcohol and reproducing or not all the alcohol all of the oxygen Sugar. it's actually oxygen they um, take the, oxygen the first, first. The first stage yeah. is they swim around, they, they take in all of the oxygen, and in that time during the oxygen, they are reproducing to create more yeast. And then once all, once all the oxygen is gone, that's when they switch over to eating sugar and pissing out alcohol and farting CO2. I do that on a daily as well. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that, brother. <laughs> cheers. Say cheers. Either too much information or cheers to that, but that's the end of my new ball talking. Say so. these strong beers. We're, we're rolling tonight. We're rolling.
So what about what else about fermentation do we want to does anybody need to know anything or have any questions? I mean, I don't say I have the answers, but is there anything we want to tackle about fermentation in general? It I just like, like it's, I mean, it's fairly straightforward in terms of what they're gonna ask. Again, they're probably not gonna ask us to go into too much into detail. I just pulled up this thing on uh Y yeast. Um and fermentation is usually divided into three stages, primary, secondary conditioning. The primary fermentation is when yeast is introduced into cool aerated wort um, and it uh, utilizes all available oxygen to produce sterols, a vital com compound for culture expansion. When the oxygen is gone, the yeast switch to anaerobic phase where the majority of wort sugars are reduced to ethanol and CO2. Yeast growth occurs during primary fermentation the extent and rate of yeast growth is directly related to the production of aroma and flavor uh, compounds. Uh, primary fermentation summary, depletion of dissolved oxygen, uh, oxygen acidification and reduction in pH, mm -hmm. yeast growth or culture expansion, ethanol and CO2 production, Production of flavor compounds such as esters, diacetyl, sulfur containing compounds, and uh, composition, uh, consumption of most wort sugars. Uh, primary fermentation temperatures for ales is 62 to 75, lagers 46 to 58, um, but you can start lagers warmer. Uh, secondary fermentation refers to the stage of fermentation after majority of the wort sugars have been consumed and there is a sharp decrease in the rate of fermentation. During this period, most of the final sugars are depleted and some secondary uh, metabolites are converted by the yeast. Yeast flocculation and settling begins to occur during the increase in alcohol content and the depletion of sugar and nutrients. Diacetyl reduction also takes place during secondary fermentation depending on the beer, file, uh, beer profile standard, once the fermentation process reaches 40 to 50%, attenuation, uh, the temperature is raised by three to five degrees to allow the yeast to reabsorb the diacetyl and break it down to acetone and then to two, three butane diol. After determining there is no more diacetyl present, the beer process, uh, the beer cooling process starts so a summary of the secondary fermentation, decreased rate of ethanol and CO2 production, diacetyl conversion, reduction of some flavor compounds by yeast metabolism or CO2 scrubbing, terminal gravity is reached, yeast flocculation and settling begins. Um, and then that's when you can raise your beers up to do a diacetyl rest. Um, <laughs> and then conditioning, um, that's cold crushing your beer down. Uh, most of the yeast is removed from the beer. Form, uh, formation in, of haze, uh, haze forming product, uh, proteins, reduction in mellowing of harsh flavors, reduction of sulfur compounds, diacetyl and acetaldehyde, and flavor stabilization. And that's from Y yeast. And so maturation occurs still on the yeast, right? Or is that off yeast? Depends. Yeah, on the yeah. lager, you <clears throat> may on the lager you may want to leave it on the yeast. Mm -hmm. Let that uh, even at thirty five degrees and let that yeast do its magic for a couple more weeks. Um, on an ale, you probably want to pump it off to a bright tank. Mm -hmm. Or in the homebrew levels, a lot of people do secondary fermentations. Right. I don't necessarily agree with those because you have a chance of adding more oxygen to your beer um so you can you can take it off the beer put it in a corny cake and let it mature in that but uh well it's one um, of the nice lockers. things about it it's one of the nice things about a secondary ver fermentation is the yeast should take care of any oxygen that gets in there during your racking process in the in the dissolved in the beer but does it do much for the headspace yeah, because everything in the headspace is going to go into solution. So you're going to end up with a with a full CO2 
um, head. Yeah, it's going to push long, out. Okay, I yeah, see what you're saying. Yep. As long as your container is actually well sealed. So if your if your bottle cap hasn't been you know properly mm-hmm. like properly. Um, um, man, these beers are 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 big. I know. <laughs> I was having a hard time reading some of those words. I was like. Yeah. I was getting a little tongue-tied with some of that. <laughs> no, I can go, it's 28.8 millimeters, the proper, uh, <laughs> the proper crimp size of a standard long neck bottle. Uh, standard Do you want to stop recording this now? Yeah, yeah, maybe we should. We? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, night, no more Yeah, and beers. then using, yeah. using an <laughs> oxygen dissolving beer cap to Ox- help. Mm-hmm. Oxygen yep. scavenging membrane is what that's called. Thank you. There yes. you go. Also, if you're going to if you're going to uh, like cellar a bottle that's been capped, those those uh, those membranes are actually only good for one one year, generally. So if you're going to cellar it, it's good to wax dip it because yep. the wax will actually create a secondary like it, it'll be airtight at that point. Just so you guys know. But they're a pain to get off. Eh, it's true. <laughs> yeah, they are. We had a well, brewery that... here in Arizona that wax dipped all of their bombers. So I'm dating myself by the word of using bombers. Yeah. But um oh it was such a pain. The beer beer was good, but just the time it took to get the wax off mm. to be able to pop the bottle. I I'm sorry, I I put actually I I put out all the numbers and everything. I figured I figured it all out. I sat down and I wrote out all the numbers and and realized that I went to my bosses and was like, "Hey, if we switch from bombers to four packs and we can raise the price to this, we would actually save this amount of money getting the fuck away from bombers." And why Correct. why do we always put the big beers in a big bottle? That doesn't make any sense. Nope. Right, right. So I bet they're going to look at the um, the different flavors you get from the different parameters around fermentation. Yeah. Like a uh, lager versus a uh, cold, cold mat- fermentation, maturation, hot. Like these, uh, like saisons and stuff are up like well above 70, yeah. for at least what I've been reading. So yeah. I want to talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean... Really, I think what it boils down to is lagers. You're not getting the same phenols that you're getting off of ale fermented temperatures and beers. Is that lagers, the fermentation is more meant to stabilize the beer and give some just kind of baseline flavors. Lagers are really meant for the malt to shine through and hops to shine through. And any ales, especially the Belgians and the Bach world, are meant to, uh, you know, bump up all those flavors and aromas of apple stone fruit you know bubble gum banana spices and the higher you go the more those flavors can become pronounced like when i worked at russian river they told me the damnation which was basically their clone of duvel was fermented all the way up at 76 degrees about as high as you can go and that was really to get those pronounced flavors or and aromas that you're getting in that belgian golden strong and when I do my saisons, they're usually over, right around 80, 80 to wow. 82 wow. degrees. Wow. Just to get to get those esters and and flavors from the farmhouse. Yeah. Farmhouse being the funkier bret, bretomy, bretomyces. Uh, Are you doing a mixed fermentation no. or just straight? A straight ale? Mine was a straight, straight ale but, yeast. Okay. But those, those, uh, Saison yeast can tolerate 85, 90. Um, but we would, uh, normally we would ferment uh, the first couple days, maybe around 65 to 68, and then let it free rise up to 80. Um, and just to pull all those flavors and saisons generally need a little bit more time in the fermenter versus just a normal ale. But, um, just starting to, starting around sixty eight and then let it free rise up. Interesting. I think uh, I think hot. I think California Commons are up there in the the low eighties too. Yeah. Yeah. 
I usually did mine around around sixty, but it's a lager yeast. Yeah. Um, and I would do it around sixty. And same same thing with the Kolsch's. Mm-hmm. But we all know I, why ferment, fermentation vessels are designed the way they are, shape wise. I do. Yeah, there's math to that. Yeah. I'm just looking at the answer in here that the cone at the bottom of the fermenter is designed to encourage yeast to flow down into it. Just take it as simple. It's a conical shaped bottom tank and it's designed for when you crash the tank, which is yeah. dropping it in temperature, that the, the yeast flocculates to the bottom so you can pull it off, off the cone, and use it in the next batch. Yeah. 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 Also, as it's coming down, it helps pull it all out so that it's easier to clean the tank as well later also it's really nice for when you're uh, dry hopping a tank because then you can uh you know get the dry hop poops out the dry hops will settle settle out some as well or is it the motion of no they settle out yeah Yeah. they settle out yeah and if you need to rouse your dry hop you could put a little co2 in the racking arm kind of force them back up swirl them a little bit make sure you're getting full yeah. use of your hops and stuff you can or if it. you add fruit to a, a fermenter you can use that co2 to help move um fruit around in the fermenter though it is best to use like a, a small pump and do a circulation yes I think <clears throat> there are some breweries that are using pumps and circulating their dry hops for like 12 hours and then they're done. They're ready to like crash it and then move it over just versus like a standard dry hop is three to seven days. They're doing it 12 hours, but these are large production breweries to, to get the beer out of the fermenter, get it clean and get the next beer in. I mean that's that's kind of the way we are. Like it's it brew to package on a standard ale is like ten days. Good. Yeah, like if that, it's just yeah. <clears throat> we, we we have like hundred and fifty barrel tanks, so they're they're damn near five thousand gallons, just pumping over and over and over again. Yeah, costs money to leave it in a tank. <clears throat> yeah. I'm actually curious about using a pump to recirculate your dry hops. I would assume that would give like a, a like a, a veg- vegetable, like, I don't know. Are you, for, are you familiar with heretic? Vaguely, brewing? yeah. Yeah, um, that's uh, Jamel's Brewery. I think he just sold it. Um, but uh, from Bruce Strong and everything on the Brewing Network, Kim and John Palmer, and that's how they do their beers is uh, their dry hops is moved around and be interesting to try a side by side do that with one fermenter and another do a normal yeah. traditional three to seven days to see what the difference is like <coughs> well, that's take. thank you yeah I'd, that would be actually really interesting I would, I would like to taste those alright so that's fermentation oh. Well, do we want to talk? I just read a lot of stuff about bottle conditioning, secondary fermentation in the bottle. And maybe that's big, maybe because I'm in the Belgian section doing the study in there. I mean, they went on and on about bottle conditioning. Um, so, any mm, uh, anything in the Cohen guide about like they made a big deal about how do you figure out how much more carbonation you need? How much more priming sugar you should put in? You know, I think you blow the bottles, kind of thing. I think in terms of that type of stuff, that's not certified. It's just, I mean, if you want to get into it for advanced, oh, I got really it. like. Okay. I'm going back to as I've talked about before. They're going to ask you why your bottle conditioning mm. and what the purpose is. They're mm-hmm. not going to ask you for the levels of X you put to bottle condition to the pristine levels i mean i'm happy to okay. look into cool. that and talk about it but nope. in terms of the certified cicerone i don't think they're going to get into that as much as what does bottle conditioning do for the beer and what are you putting in the bottles of bottle condition you know what is the oh, purpose? Right. got it okay. okay we actually bottle condi- my, i mean I, I feel free to disagree anybody but i just don't think it's 
necessarily worth it to get into levels and numbers and numerical values. It's to be. I don't think that's going to be on the certified system. I think that's too in depth. To be honest, really we we do a baseline that's above mm-hmm. certified beer server without going into the depths and details of what really makes beer go. If that makes sense. So we, we do bottle condition like a lot of our sour beers. Anything that comes with a cork yeah. gauge is bottle conditioned. And uh, every beer is different, and it's a different calculation for each one because you're going off the gravity, you know, the finished mm-hmm. gravity, and then you're adding more sugar. Like, it's that's going to be way above. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing what bottle conditioning is is going to probably be one question on the exam. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that's it. Cool. So, we haven't gotten through that glass that. of beer yet. Um, no, so what no. are we thinking? <laughs> what are we thinking next week? You want to go? Uh, should we go domestic? If we're going, well, I was going to suggest doing stouts before it got too hot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like doing a doing an oatmeal versus an Irish dry, or a milk stout. For, you know, doing two of those side by side just before it gets too warm out. It's a really good with that. For John, it might not be matter if it's warm out or not because yeah. Well, I'm. I'll drink. I can drink stout year round. No, I can't. Just, I just, yeah, I was thinking oh. we haven't done dark. You know, I don't think we've done anything dark at all. Really. Can you? Can you guys readily find like barrel aged stouts? Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. Think we tested I mean, on on the exam though, so I'm trying okay. to. Okay. Oatmeal, milk, and Irish stouts are probably the three most likely. So picking between okay. two of those, like Irish dries are pretty easy to find. I'd say. Mm-hmm. And oatmeal? Yeah. Okay. Oatmeal I mean, and Irish. Okay. a sweet stout, it's just going to be lactose pre. I mean, it's just going to be a different type of sugary body, but Irish and oatmeal stout for next week. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good, good to me. And we're Sunday night again? Yeah, we're back. We're, we're, we're steady on Sundays for a while. Got it. And do we want to, like, um, what do we want to talk about? Do we want to get into, like, regions? Like, do we want to focus on, like, Trappist beers, the monasteries, the styles, or do we want to talk about English? Like, do you want to get the style based talk, or is there anything else that we want to? I'm good with that, but I feel if we're going to do Trappist, we should do Trappist beers. Yeah, Fair yeah. So maybe for next week, we talk about English beers. For, okay. Or, I mean, I just don't know how much there is to cover with stouts and porters as a style topic. Well, the history of porter is fascinating. So that's true. Yeah. 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 We're not drinking a porter, but <laughs> yeah, I think so we can do, get into styles and stuff. Sure. Do we need to know about open top fermentation, mixed fermentation, uh, wild fermentation? We for... can also talk about that next week to continue the fermentation discussion. Okay. I mean, there will I be some know, like for, for, for certified, certified if we need to know that. There definitely will be questions about, you know, what Britannomyces does and what Lacto does and wood barrel aging to an extent and mm-hmm. maybe a little bit about cool ship and, you know, a wild firm and, or spontaneous firm. So we can talk about that or, or we could do, you know, we could do Flanders, we could do Flanders style stuff next week and talk about mixed fermentation. If we want to, if we want to combine beers and topics. Yeah, we could talk. Well, that, about we're still on Belgian. Let's stay on Belgian. That's not going to get cheaper. <laughs> it's not going to get cheap. That's <laughs> Flanders new brewing. I know I can find Flanders here. I've seen Rodenbach. Yeah, um, I've seen that one. But what do we want to do? We want to combine st- you know, con- topic and beers. It does not really matter. I think it's interesting, but. Either way. Yeah, I just kind of wonder if we go over it, uh, the history of the, of say, Flanders versus Old Bruin. And um, I like that we're incorporating the, the food pairings at yeah. the same time. And then maybe talking about uh, SRMs and alcohol content and stuff at the same time too i'm going to talk about lacto and brett and some wood aging yeah. next so we'll do that for next yeah. week okay and then okay. we can go to the stouts and stuff the week after okay. all right so, so we're that is do... it up to a to an old bruin old bruin and a i had rodenbach written down but that's yeah. a red Flanders. Yeah, Flanders, Flanders, yeah. red and, and we'll talk about 
lacto. We'll talk about all the funky stuff. We'll get funky next week. Woo! Okay. Funky Sunday. East Flanders <laughs> versus West Flanders. <laughs> and then Ned Flanders somewhere in there as well. <laughs> Yo, Sunday, it's the Simpsons on Fox. <laughs> How do you do that? Perfect. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't. What, do, what does he say? It's, um... How do you... Uh... You're you're there. It's not howdy doodly do. Howdy doody, not howdy doody. No, it's not howdy doody. It's yeah. Eh, whatever. (laughs) It'll come to you in twenty minutes once the beer finish is hitting. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Pretty much, yeah. I've been catching myself do the old guy thing of like, huh, like all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Uh huh. It hits. Don't worry. Uh, I was going to say my allergies got worse after 50, but I didn't want to age myself that badly. My allergies have gotten worse every freaking year. I am officially middle-aged. I just turned 42, so, you know. This is going to be my pivot career. I'm retiring at the end of this year, and I'm going to go into beer instead of bureaucratic. So I can't wait. Nice. Congratulations. I don't know what it, I don't know what that means, but it's going to be different. Hey. Well, if you, Do, need, if, you, if you need more beer connections in Burlington, I have some for you, so let me know. There's look, looking for a driver for the brew tour up here, boss, but I, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't quite do that. That's a good guy. I, 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 yeah. I, uh, I uh, interviewed for them a couple years ago to do a sales role. They're good people. Yeah, I can't quite fit it into the, that other job <laughs> right now. But, you know. yeah. I've actually seriously considered moving to your area. Like, yeah. Arlington, so Vermont on. seems really freaking cool. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Um, that winter thing. Oh. Although you got winter where you are, so it's not like it's not yeah. like it, it's John that doesn't have winter. You know. So where where I live is uh, is the island of blue and the sea of red. Uh, got it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that. Yeah, Vermont's yeah. Vermont's got some pretty pretty strong blue, but there's some red areas. Yeah. And if you get out in the countryside, it gets a lot redder. But there aren't many people there, so <laughs> it changes. You know. All so right. Have you volunteered any of the beer fests up there ever? I haven't yet. Um, I made this summer, and that's you know, a really good way to get in. And it's talk true. To yeah. I mm-hmm. did that in San Diego, and I bought. I mean, San Diego had a beer fest like every other month, which is great. Yeah. I There's a brew going every, every corner too. Yeah. 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 You you meet so many people, so you know I know they have a Lake Champlain waterfront fest, and mm-hmm. Oktoberfest fest type stuff. I I get your name like brew races stuff like that. I get your name on the list if you have some spare weekends. Yeah, it's a really good True way enough. to get in. True enough. Just my, yeah. just my two cents. But, yep. Cool. All right. Good. Hopefully we'll have more more of a crowd next week, too. Yeah, I know. Bender, you're, you're not, you haven't even got through that beer yet. No, no, I finished one. No, no, no. Oh, oh, one. Yeah. no, no mind you. My, mine's Not a lot one. bigger than all of yours. That's so. true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Look at that. That's beautiful. That. Yeah. That is beautiful beer, lacing. Yeah. It's a beer clean glass. There yeah. you go. All right. All right. Um, Sounds like good stuff. Uh, Sounds good. Have a good one, everyone. Right, everybody. See you next week. Take care. Bye.